Hello and uh, welcome to Cannock Chase. I'm in an area I've never been to before and I've got myself a guide. Simon reached out to us on our Facebook group, LVA, the Landscape Photography Adventures group, Facebook, and said, look, if you're coming down this way, give us a shout. And he's gonna show us a few hidden secrets. And there's one particular place, thanks to Nigel Dumpson, who did a video a couple of weeks ago, Groot. I'm gonna go and see Groot, and I am really, really excited to see that. But at the moment, I'm at, Essex Bridge. I knew I'd forget as soon as I started talking. He'd already told me what it was. Essex Bridge. And look at that. How cool is that little thing. I'm going to try and get the drone out. It's a bit drizzly, but I might get the drone out just to show you an aerial view because you need to see it from above. Um, but that is pretty awesome. So I'm going to get some pictures. There is a bit of colour. You can see a bit of colour up there in the trees. And uh, he also said he took an image down here. And I still think there's an image there. Uh, you've got the little weir and you've got this sort of weeping willow with a few sort of golden leaves still on it. And there's a nice golden patch over on the left hand side or the right hand side left to you. Um, so I still think there's a shot down there as well. So I'm going to get the camera out. I'm going to catch my breath a little bit because this bugger walks really fast because <laughs> he cycles everywhere and uh, I'm out of breath and that makes a change for me to be out of breath on a flat surface. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get the camera out, set up a composition and I'll come back and talk to you about it. So I've got the camera out and I've started already. Uh, I've gone for something really, really simple just to start off, just to get myself a record of the bridge and just to try and get me uh, my photography eye in the, in the move and to get myself sort of flowing and moving. So I set the bridge up. Just a simple shot straight across the side of the bridge i've got this reflection though um you see the reflection there i've sort of got the reflection leading from the bottom left hand corner and i've got another bit of the bank coming in from the other side but this is definitely an aerial shot this needs to be shot from a drone um, from the side it just does not do it any justice to what this really is so i'm going to have to get the drone out uh, i've bracketed to try and get a bit of sky down but it really is quite flat and i did have this little little young swan down here and mummy swans behind me down here keep hissing and gurgling at me because uh She's a uh, territorial looking after her young ones. Um, so yeah, I did get a picture of the swan in it, but the shot speed was just a little bit too slow as it came past. So I'll show you it anyway. It's just a bit of a blurred swan, but if it was sharp, it would have been absolutely perfect because it was just in the patch of the reflection that you can see. Um, I've not got a polarizer on because I just don't think it's worth, worth doing at the moment, but that's the first shot. Very, very simple. A little bit of yellow color over in the trees in the background, um, but this is definitely, definitely an aerial shot. Um, it, it doesn't do any justice in this light shooting from this level. I'm using the X-T4 now more than anything, so. Right, another shot set up, second shot. Took the shot of the bridge, like I said to you, it's very simple, but I did get the drone up. I've obviously shown you a little bit of footage and I've shown you the image. The image I think was a lot better looking down because it's all about the little zigzags and the little triangles down the bridge. So I think that little drone shot, as long as it worked out, and I did bracket it on the drone. Uh, as long as it worked out all right, looking down, I think that's that'd probably be okay. The light wasn't perfect, but the light is moving really, really fast. You can't see there, see if I'm gonna turn you down, but the clouds up there are, are washing past really, really quite fast at the moment. So uh, we're getting little breaks in the clouds. But I've got the camera set up pointing this direction. I've taken a slightly wider one already. And I don't wanna step back too far because there's a bit of dog poop on the floor and I don't wanna be putting my foot in it. Um, but I just like the colors. I like that little, I like the atmosphere of what's going on down there and there's some leaves blowing across as well. I've put the polarizer on because it just punched the colors just a little bit more. Um, there's not a lot of light on it, but there's enough light on it, I think, for the Fuji to handle them colours. And the colours down there are really, really stunning. So I'm just going to take this last one at F11. ISO 160 is normal on the, Fu on the Fuji. And I've zoomed in a little bit more this time, bracketed the shots, and all I've got is the top of the weir. That's all I've got in this shot, the top of the weir, uh, with all the little leaves on the top of it, and then looking down into the colourful sort of background as it drifts down. And I'm going to try and add a little bit of a, a mist to it if I can as well. Um, but he's got some more to show me, so we're not going to spend too long here. I've got a full day of it. So yeah, that's that shot done. And he's raring to go, look, his kit's ready, he's all up, let's get going. Oh my God. I 
come up onto the bridge now as you can see and look at this for a bridge i know you've already seen it on the drone footage but what an absolutely cracking little bridge and i will try and find out the age for it um, and put it up on the screen for you because you're not quite sure the age i said so it's a very very old old bridge this and it looks really cool i've got the camera up way high because it's well above my head um, and the reason being is i want to sort of look down as much as i can on the bridge um, and all i've done is taken a simple shot just it's, it's almost like a record shot, really. 17th century. 17th century, 17th century. So it is, it's quite some, uh, some time ago. Um, so yeah, simple little shot. I've got the bridge just leading through the image and I've just kept those sort of yellowy sort of colored trees in it. And I sort of cropped a chunk of the sky. It's a pretty simple, pretty basic shot. There's nothing fancy about this whatsoever. And it's definitely not gonna win any awards. But it's a record that I've been on this bridge. Um, I also I think I ought to get a selfie quickly and then uh, we're gonna head on. We are now walking along the canal and this is the uh, Great Haywood, or we're in Great Haywood, you can see the signpost behind me, Ed. Um, so yeah, the transition from walking across the woods there on that little bridge, and now we're on the edge of the canal. And there was a nice shot looking back from back where I was, to where we first came on, looking down this way towards this bridge. But I think it just wanted a little bit different light. Uh, the, mud, the water looks a bit muddy, which is obvious for canals. They always look brown, don't they? But uh, yeah, it just looked a bit too muddy for a decent shot, but I'm quite looking forward to today. Lots of different things, lots of new stuff, and I haven't got to do any thinking. I've got a guide. How cool is that? It's heading through this little bit of a woodland and I'm gonna stop and look at these little gnarly trees and stuff. A few trees that aren't not of normally on the uh, bookshelf for trees. They look a bit more like um, the ones you get in the, I forgot what I was gonna say then. The ones you get in the crematorium, not crematorium, the graveyards. I know what I'm on about get there in the end but there's an old track there or something or oh, it must be an old pathway for the for the hall um, and now we're coming back out into the open again so it's going to be a case of lots of different exposures today let's just turn you back down because you're a bit bright there you go yeah lots of different exposures today thank you Gateman <laughs> and now we're back out little building over there in the distance but the light has got quite different and pretty uh, moody over in the background there <sighs> he don't half know how to do some walking I tell you <laughs> he's got me walking left right and center but we've got lots of colour still going on in the trees. And I've missed out on the colour. Look at this behind, look, look at the colour. So I've missed out on it, because I went up to the Lake District, which I'm sure you've already seen, my little trip up there. And I was about two weeks early. And then at home, we sort of, it's a bit on and off. And yeah, you're probably a couple of weeks late here, but there's still lots of colour in the trees. Uh, the ones that have been sheltered by the wind. And there's lots of foliage on the floor, which is really nice as well, so. I'm hoping he's taking me to the fairy tower wood, is it? Yeah, fairy tower, a bit yeah. of a fairy tower wood. And uh, he reckons I'm going to quite like this. So now I'm going to slow down. I'm going to look for a couple of really interesting trees. And yes, I know we haven't got the mist, but the light's in and out. So we'll just see what happens. And you know me, if nothing else, we'll still come away with a picture or two. Dieter, we come down to have a look at this. He wanted me to show me this bridge, and it's pretty spectacular. What he wants is a big dramatic sky over it, or a steam train to come along with a big puff of steam on the top. But what a piece of work this is! And it's called the Litchfield Drive Bridge. Litchfield Drive Bridge. Um, so if you're into your bridges and your arches and stuff like that, well worth coming to have a look at. But look at that. I'll take you a bit closer and show you.
So I'm definitely getting my uh, steps up today, really giving me a good walk. And uh, we come down into another part of the woodland now and uh, didn't find much in the little fairy tale bit. The colors are already sort of blowing away apparently, or unfortunately, but this is looking quite promising though. Big old dead oak tree. Look at that bugger there. Um, might be worth a shot, maybe, maybe. Probably end up a black and white. Get down underneath it. Sort of try and put all the branches into the sky so the little tree's not catching it as well. It might be worth a shot. Definitely one way, reason to get my camera out anyway. Not far, <sighs> not far, not far. I had the camera out, I've had a move around to see if I can get a shot of it and it's just not quite, can't quite make it work. So we'll uh, just admire it and walk away and leave that one. But you know me, I do like a nice old tree. So uh, yeah, it, was, it looks pretty promising at first. But I'm not, I've seen a few images few little shots but nothing that's really making me want to stop and get the tripod out but again it's walking around and it sometimes it takes a couple of times to walk around and and to get your get your head working on different images but there's lots of color you can see there's lots of color going on in all these trees it's just finding something that really jumps out I thought I found one earlier on and I did take a handheld shot um, so I could show you that maybe just as, if it does work it almost looks like um, one of those frazzly fireworks that sort of all draped down and because some of the leaves have died off they almost look like the little strands so I quite liked it but it looked better from a distance but from a distance you had trees in front of it so the closer I got to it to separate it I lost the dark background so I'll show you it anyway um, just as a bit of a record of what I was looking at but there's loads and loads of trees down here it's just trying to find something that really wants to jump out at me just crept up into the woods a little bit, come off the pathway, we're in the middle of all the bracken, or the dying off bracken. There's a little tree just there, and there's this tree there. I shot that one from down there, only handheld. Um, it's got something about it, but I couldn't, I'm not sure whether I can make it or not, but I've took a shot of it anyway, and I've, you know, I've took a handheld one. I've just taken a couple of handheld ones of that. Um, the reason is, and we came up this far to try and eliminate some of these trees around us, it's just got a nice look about it. I just like the, I like the branch, I like the trunk, it's quite dark and twisty and uh, the yellow leaves on it but I'm just not sure whether it's separated enough and open enough to actually, is that that bloody thorny thing? Got some brambles down here, we don't want to be walking into them. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's separated enough to make it work properly but I took it anyway, might as well. I've not seen that one before so I've got a record of it and now we've got to make our way back down and there's some big, big trees down here. That down there, for instance, is mahoostiff. Absolutely massive. So this is a place I will definitely be bringing Mrs. C and having a good wander around. And uh, like Simon said, you can spend a few weeks around here wandering around and looking in all the nooks and crannies. It's a massive place, Cank Chase. Uh, so I will be coming back. And it's only 35 miles away from home. Why haven't I been here before? That's the question. I'm sure I have at some point, but just, uh, can't think about it here. Yeah, just look at this tree. Let me get a bit closer to this and see how big this is. This is massive. Ooh, look. Hang on, let's try not to. Don't want to knock a cyclist off, we? Look at the size of this. It is huge, but not very tall. Right, enough waffling. Let's go looking. Right, so I've just taken another shot of a tree, and it's one old tree in the middle of um, a lot of straight lines and I quite like it. Uh, I'm just going to move the camera around a little bit now just to see if I can clean it up a bit more because I've got a branch coming in from the right hand side. I don't think I can get rid of it because if I go too far to the left the tree in front of it the bigger branch the bigger trunk sort of gets in your way. Um, I, I don't think it works quite as well. I'm just trying to get rid of that branch and I've gone in for the longer lens just because all I want is that one tree and all the straight lines around it because it just really stands out on its own it looks pretty good shame there's not a, a glimpse of light right up on the top because that would do that'd be even better let's try going in really tight I've gone in quite tight now I'm what am I on now nearly 140 mil um, I'm gonna bracket just to say play safe but it doesn't need bracketing because histograms bang in the middle and I've got the polarizer on because it's just making the colors pop a little bit and uh, 
let's bring the f-stop down I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the f-stop down to 6.4 and that might just help separate it a little bit from the other trees which is just about this one tree in amongst all these straight lines that I like and that's another one done there is another tree over that side but I can't get in a position to suit to lose it and apparently the best is yet to come so let's not waste any more time here the dodgy water He took a photo of that one. Did he now? Yeah. I've just been informed that Mr. Dampson took a picture of that tree. And in these conditions, I'd say, why? Why? But I have to rewatch his video again now just to see why and what conditions he had because it's not one that would jump out at me, that isn't. But there are now starting to get a few more interesting looking trees and shapes as we've come off the main pathway and uh, walking down some smaller tracks. And this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting. And at the end of the day, there's just one tree I've come to shoot. One photograph I want, just one. Even though I've taken a few record shots on the way around but there is just one tree and when you see it I'm sure you'll be as amazed as I am or was or will be Whew. now I've only had to walk up a little hill and it's really made me puff and pant but instantly walking under that branch has really suddenly transformed the woodland where we are and we have got <laughs> is that him? God, it doesn't look the same from this angle. And we have got some amazing looking trees. And hello, Mr. Groot. Here he is. Here he is. This, this chap here is what I've come to shoot. <laughs> this is what I've come to shoot. Mr. Groot. We've got to get ourselves an angle on him. And I will walk underneath in a minute when I've got my bag off my back. But as I walk away, you'll see over my shoulder how he becomes Mr. Groot. Look at that. Can you see that? I've got a smile because he is amazing. Probably one of the best trees I've seen in my entire life. By far the best tree I've ever seen in my life. So I am struggling a little bit. The light is directly behind, just up here. And it's really making the, the shadow details really dark. So I'm having to bracket no matter what. When the light comes down and backlights it, it looks really good because you get all the yellows of the trees and all the yellows of the leaves and that are shining. So when it's backlit, it looks quite good. Um, but of course, when it's backlit, it's even darker on the trunk. So I am kind of struggling. Um, what I am trying to do is you can see on this branch about there on the tree in front of it, there's a little arch and I'm trying to put Groot's head up in that little arch um, so you can see his head. But I'm also going to move back over as well and put him on the sideways, you know, so he looks like he's walking away from the other trees. Um, I'm going to try another couple of different angles as well because this was the angle the shot was taken that I saw that I really liked. Um, but I'd like to see if I can get another bit of an angle on it. And I'm also going to get the drone out and have a bit of a fly around him as well. But I'm going to be here for a little while trying to work this one out. Because I want to try and get an absolute minter. But it's just difficult. The light's just in the wrong place. We won't give up. I think I've got him. I think I've got a shot that works a bit better. Now I'm at 5.6, f5.6, just to give me a slightly shallower depth of field. And uh, yes, I've got this, this skyline that I'm not sure I can crop out. If I can, I will, but the branch, the foreground tree branch is going up into that skyline. Um, so I don't want to lose that. Um, but basically what, what I've got is the tree on the left-hand side, which is framing the left-hand side. And then Groot's walking away from his mate, his tree. And he's walking down into the woodland. And the arm of this tree is framing Groot and it leads you right the way through the image 
So this framing of this tree is actually framing group walking into the woodlands. And you can see with his arms out as he's walking down the hill, down the bank. Perfect position for a selfie as well. I am going to go down there and shake his hand and uh, say hello. But yeah, I'm going to take a few shots, one with the sun out, one with the sun in, just to see if it helps. Um, it's just difficult to expose for such a big dynamic range. The sun is just in the wrong place. If the sun was round here, side lighting it, that would be just absolutely peachy, an absolute stunner. But it's just right in front of us. It's really in the wrong place. I'm going to see if I can try and do something with this branch, see if I can bring the camera up a little bit, but I'm just not sure I can. I'm not sure I can. It might just be a case of having a, a brighter part of the top of the image. Pretty much like you're looking at now, that little segment there, it's just a bit brighter. But I'm going to get me selfie. Got to have me selfie with Groot. I've come a bit further back now, as you can see, uh, Groot's looking a lot smaller down there. Uh, I think it works a little bit better. Um, his head's intersecting a bit more with that branch. Before my card filled up, which is normally my battery, isn't it? I was saying we've moved back a little bit further. As you can see, Groot's now a little bit further away from the camera, but I've managed to zoom in a little bit. But by coming up the bank slightly, I've now eliminated that skyline. So I've managed to chop the, the image is going to be cropped somewhere across there um, so that there's no skyline above, above the, you know, above Groot to sort of blow the top of the screen out. Um, so now all I'm going to do now is sit and wait for a bit of light. I've got an apple. I haven't brought any water with me. I've got coffee, so I'm going to finish my coffee off, but it's not doing me any favours this morning, the coffee ain't. I, I need some water. So uh, we're not a million miles away from the van, but I think he's got some more for me to do yet, a little bit more walking to do. Right, I'm just going to sit here and wait. I've done my selfie. I've met Groot. All I've got to do now is just get that shot. I suppose I better get a bit of up close and personal just to say I've done it. How absolutely amazing. So, I've had my close encounters with Mr. Groot. Made up, very chuffed. Thank you to this man there, Simon, who knew exactly where he was, who could bring me to him without me walking for miles and miles and miles and days and days looking for him. I've taken a couple of shots, as you've seen, in different angles. I'm gonna probably call it here. I might switch the video back on just to do a last little bit if we've got another tree or two to look at. 
um, but I'm on my third flat battery. I put a battery back in my camera and it's showing up red already. So I've put a power pack. I've actually plugged my power pack in and uh, as you can see there, and hopefully I can get a bit of charge in it. So otherwise it's going to be XT free tomorrow and uh, get the batteries charged up. But still made up with this and I will come and check out if I don't use the camera again, I'll come and say goodbye. But yeah, I'm going to pack this lot away. I'm going to, we're heading up that way. Yeah. We're heading up that way and there's bound to be something else I'm going to get the camera out for. Even if it's just one or two or three, whatever. Slight change of scenery. I'm now at a small waterfall and a very old bridge. Um, he's brought me to a place called Hagley Hall. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the exact location of this because it's quite old and we don't want people coming down graffiti and all over it. Um, but I'm going to take a shot of it anyway while I'm here. It's not the perfect conditions, the light's not great and it's really messy and it's quite busy and disturbingly scruffy. But never let it said that I won't have a try. Um, there are some mushy leaves around. What's favourable at the moment, oh, I'm just hit the tripod. What's favourable at the moment is that little rock about there. So I'm going to have to step in the water slightly. Probably use that rock with the little green lichens on the front. I've got a big lump of concrete in the middle, but there's not a lot I can do about it. But let's just see if I'm going to make an image of this and see if it's, uh, well, I'm going to show you anyway. I'm going to take an image, I'm going to show you. And I'm going to have a look just to see if there's another way of taking it. But it might just be a case of a record shot. It's pretty cool. Different light, different conditions. Maybe some ice or something where you've got icicles dropping off it. It'll look pretty good. So that's the plan. Let's get this one done and I'm going to say goodbye. Not the best conditions for this. Um, I've taken a shot nevertheless, like I promised. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, like I said, there's a big lump of concrete right in the foreground. I think you need to be on that side of the river. And I haven't got my wellies on at the moment, so I'm not going to trample over there and it's not that easy to jump down on the other side either so uh, i know where it is there's always one i can put down in the books and when there's a bit of snow or ice around it might be worth having a visit it's not far away from home at the end of the day so uh, yeah it's a pretty cool looking bridge though very old looking and there's a good flow of water and simon said the water comes right up on the side of the bank so once the water's been up and washed all these leaves away it, look, it might look completely different and it will submerge some of the concrete blocks in the bottom um, but yeah, I've taken that image. I'm just going to have a slight look, slight side on maybe, but the, the white is, is quite harsh. The white sky is a bit harsh. Polarizers on just to get rid of the glare. Um, so that's that one. I'm going to try and take one more. But yeah, thanks for watching this. I know it's been a bit of a random video, hasn't it? Um, me just popping up in different places, in different locations, different trees. Um, but it's a different area. It's a new area, somewhere I haven't been before. I've had a look around. I now know roughly where I'm going. Yeah, my battery went dead. I know, I know, I know. Another battery in there now. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Thanks for watching. I know it's been a bit random, but uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks to Simon for showing us around. And uh, yeah, if you know your area and you want us to come and visit, give me a shout. You know where I am. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say goodbye now. Until next time, different adventure. I'm actually off for a few days, so I've got a couple of uh, new adventures to go on. So. Stay with me for the next couple of videos because there's a couple of new locations that I haven't been to and one I don't know even if it's been videoed before or if it has, I've not come across it. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. See you soon. Ciao for now. Take care.